Welcome to the show. Today we have Patrick Smith. Patrick, how are you doing? I'm very good, sir. It's an honor, to, an honor to be here. How are you? Well, I am doing quite well. Thrilled to have you here. Patrick, of course, for those of you who don't know, uh, is Patrick Smith of Disenthrall and of Anarchast, and more recently of a libertarian charity called Voluntary Virtue. I love it. I love it. And recently, Patrick uh, invited me to come on board with, uh, he has two other people that have kind of founded it with him, Christian and Sherry. And uh, today I thought we would chat with Patrick and kind of find out his thoughts about the direction that he wants uh, Voluntary Virtue to go, his hopes and goals for it, his role in it, et cetera. Uh, So uh, kind of to start, you have a day job. And what is that? I feel like I have several, but yes, <laughs> I am a chief technology officer for Float, which is um, an alternative censorship free uh, social network. Okay. So it's kind of like digital music uh, to the eight track uh, compared to, you know, Float compared to Facebook. It's kind of, that's the comparison of what you guys are starting from what I can tell. Um, so yeah, that's a- about the nannying. Yeah. <laughs> Great. You can kind of get to do what you want to do. I like that. Um, yeah. So how long ago did, uh, I believe it was you and Christian that first had this idea, how long ago did you guys first have this idea to to start up a libertarian charity? Two, two plus years ago, I started thinking about it, um, just kind of the ideas were tumbling around in the barrel of rocks that is my brain, and uh, <laughs> eventually it got polished enough and uh, it made sense enough to actually put it into action, uh, and part of it was just coming to this realization that man, there's just so much of what we do is complain. We complain about the government not doing charity well or effectively or like it costs too much money, you know, through taxation and all this stuff. And and all we do is complain. While the government's taking too much for money, we can't do anything. Well, the government's charity is terrible and it doesn't actually help people. Uh, and I was just complaining about a lot of things. And it just sort of hit me, a bunch of different things hit me at the same time. I was complaining about charity. I was complaining about libertarian groups that weren't really doing liberty they weren't doing liberty in the world and uh i said okay well it's time to shut up and actually do something to create something uh to create wonderful world yeah yeah and something that i really like about this project is and i don't know christian's professional background however philosophically he's very consistent um you know i see the background i don't know if we can judge people of this uh, by this or not. I sure hope not. But the background in the videos I've seen him is very clean and neat and orderly. And he seems to kind of, he's a young guy, but he seems to really have his stuff together. And then of course, I know you to be a true follow through, get it done kind of business person who in a mainstream environment is a go getter, get it done kind of person. And I, I, unfortunately, many of our friends in the libertarian voluntarist world are, are very high in hopes, but might not have the best follow through and get it done in this. So I was very attracted to the project with you two on it. And of course, Sherry is wonderful and brilliant. And so I I, I think there's going to be some success here. Uh, What's your hope and timeline? Like, what what do you have right now? We're recording this in July of 21. What's your hope for the rest of this year? What what do you kind of want to achieve? Uh, I want to kick off three things. We have two events and um, and then a a fun social media group called the Tactical Charity Society. So there's there's kind of a two pronged attack to this charity that makes it different from other charities. So the first thing that it does, which I think Bear's talking about before we get to the events that we're doing, is that it's going to be a uh, sort of a monthly Patreon membership where people that want to do good in the world but don't have time to actually go and do the, wor- the the good in the world can contribute monetarily. So five bucks, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever people can do monthly as a membership. And then we build up these funds over time. And then we're able to, when, when we locate somebody in need, we're able to use those resources um, collectively Uh, to drop in on this person's world and solve some major problem of theirs. I I need to find a better way to describe it, but everybody will know what this means. So I'll just say sort of make a wish style charity where they are, they have located people in need and they drop in to that person's situation. In their case, it's children. In our case, it's going to be, you know, the general public from a libertarian perspective. 
And they, they come in and they fix something, they solve something, they put resources to work in a way that improves people's lives that are in bad situation. That's half of it. The other half is sort of um, uh, boots on the ground, like an actual community building exercise where each act that we do has two components. It has that money component where we come in and we help somebody in some fiscal way. And then the other half is we're going to actually mobilize people to either that are already in the person's area or that maybe even travel to the person's area to do something for them in person, because I know how powerful that can be to, to actually show up and help somebody in person. So that's the plan. The two events that we're doing just to kind of kick things off, we're doing, normally I do like a birthday thing. And this year in September, uh, I go out and I, um, I, I'm pretty good at cooking a steak. So I, for my birthday each year, I go out and I cook filet mignon for the homeless, like as many filets for as many people as will eat them. Uh, I do that. And I'm doing that again in September. This year, we're going to do that through this organization so that the donors can get tax exemptions and can get, you know, um, so that there's more sort of credibility there so that maybe I can get some more donations of filets <laughs> from, from butchers. And, uh, and then the second event we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be partnering with a group of, of street activists called Don't Comply that also do uh, homeless outreach stuff in the Dallas area every December. So they go out and they give food and clothes and sleeping bags and tents to people that are literally sleeping on the concrete in <clears throat> sub temperatures in the Dallas area. Uh, so that, those, are, those are kind of our kickoff events. I'm sure there's going to be more stuff happening, though. Okay, great. It, it sounds like this is really something I love what you were saying about actually being there in person and making something happen. And in my professional life, in my philosophy life, and in my mentoring life, I've kind of discovered that very frequently, a person not having a lot of money, money won't solve that problem. It, it's the teaching to fish or there's another bigger underlying problem. And so being able to actually be there when somebody has, you know, their house burns down or, or something in life explodes or implodes and they, they need a hand. They've been living a good, clean life uh, or fairly. So at least they, they haven't been, you know, competing to, to win the Darwin awards. And, and then something really bad and unexpected happens. And then we voluntary virtue can kind of step in and say, Hey, let, let us help you over this little tough time. I, I love the smart way that you guys are designing it and, and making it happen. That's des by design, I'm sure. Well, I, you say you guys, but I purposefully invited you because of the brains that you have over there. And you have provided repeated invaluable advice uh, that has changed our direction and planning throughout the process. Uh, several times you've saved us from bad decisions. So you're you're part of this we too. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. And yeah. by the way, folks watching, uh, just so you kind of know some of the behind the scenes that we've been going through, and this is not to whine about what we're doing. This is just to say that we didn't get around and smoke a bunch of the marijuanas and ayahuascas last night while we're skinny dipping and decide to do something crazy. Like this is a thought out, serious adult thing. Um, Patrick spending all kinds of money so far doing the startup. Getting uh, attorneys on board to, to to review the documents, and so we're forming a corporation, and then filing for a five hundred one c three status with the IRS, and and uh, Christians going through all the work of of getting policies and procedures going, and the the like. This is not just a tossed together quickly kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of work going into it, and again, not asking for accolades. I'm kind of saying. Yeah, maybe don't trust us with the ultimate donation that you plan to give, but I'm saying that I think you're going to be good to toss a few bucks in each month, watch us for a little while, see if we're living up to what it is you want, give us feedback, and I think, I mean, this is a long-term thing, right? Yeah, we're not messing around. We're not just getting a few people together to gather some donations for one or two events. We're building something that we want to be big and we want it to be around for the long haul and we want to bring a lot of people together to do good in the world. So we're doing it right and we're not doing skinny dipping marijuanas. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, in, in our circles, what I love is that I've got, I've had the opportunity to meet so many wonderful people the last 13 years that I've, I've been in the kind of, the, I guess, I don't know what the best term for it is, humanitarianism or whatever this little area of the world is that we're in, the, uh, our philosophy. And there are, many of us are very weird and strange. And I'm, I'm at the top of that list, but I've certainly met some people that uh, even makes me think that I'm normal. So <laughs> sorry if any of you do enjoy skinny dipping and marijuanas and ayahuascas. Um, I just don't know that much about it. I'm kind of a, a little bit more of a boring boomer kind of guy. Um, <laughs> so, so getting away from that, what are there things that people can do to help other than uh, tossing in a few bucks a month? Are are, uh, are you looking for people to volunteer time or ideas or what what needs do you identify uh, that maybe a, a person with libertarian humanitarian voluntarist leanings could jump in and do? There is so much that people can do and that we need help. So one of the ways that we can raise money to do more good in the world is by selling swag. And one of the coolest ways to, to do that is to have really good swag designers. So if you know how to design good t-shirts or hats or things with our slogans or our logos on them or funny sayings, you know, like a lot of the, a lot of times when we talk to the general public about how we think government's role should be drastically, if not completely reduced, they say, well, how are the roads going to get built when we do that? And so there's a joke, you know, called, oh, my roads, my roads, what are, how are we going to get my roads without government? It's an insider sort of libertarian joke. Well, the exact same conversation happens with charity without the government. How are you, how are we going to help people? Well, the answer is we includes you. What are you going to do to help people? Maturity. So one of the first shirts that I hope we get is a maturity shirt with the voluntary. You know, we need people to design this stuff is the first thing. So we need good designers. Next, we need organizers, people that can get people together to go and do these tactical charity operations. When we, when we as a, a nonprofit organization come in and help somebody, we need that in-person um, community effort where people show up and help people that has to be organized. That has to be overseen and executed well and trust with, you know, with uh, trustworthy people involved that can, that want to do good in person. So we need those people. We need people to help on social media, get the word out, share our, share our events, share what we're doing, help us get more donors, uh, help us get more members donating so that we can do larger and larger things. We need all sorts of stuff. So if if you want to help and don't even know, like if those things aren't something that you think you're good at, but you still want to help, reach out to us and uh, we'll see what we can. I mean, because there's a long list. There's certainly something you can help with. Yeah, I, I, I love that, that the the whole community, not a geographic community, but the whole uh, group of people who say, hey, here's an idea. How about I don't hurt you? How about you don't hurt me? How about we're honest with each other and we don't steal from each other? Everybody cool with that? Okay, let's let's move forward in life and go out and create all kinds of wonderful stuff and be, be wonderful producers that we can all also get together and say, yeah, every so often we're going to stumble. Somebody's going to stumble and, and, and here's somebody that can, you know, Give a give a helping hand up. Uh, what are your thoughts? As I say that, I say the hand up, and I, I've heard you know that term recently, hand up instead of hand out. What, what are your thoughts about long term help? If there is someone that's born missing a couple legs, is voluntary virtue someone that's going to be giving a thousand bucks a month so that the person is no longer on social security, or is is this more of a one time swoop in thing? Or what are your thoughts about that direction? Uh, I'm I'm thinking more like one time larger acts uh, are certainly where we're going to focus in the beginning. I mean, who knows where this can go if, if it gets big and we have some larger donors, we can add to our strategies in the future. But I think in the beginning, it's primarily going to be these focused events where we see somebody in a bad place and we resolve to the best degree possible that issue. And then we sort of go back into saving up our chest, our war chest to uh, to help the next person. Uh, and I, I foresee that's how it's going to be for quite some time until we maybe grow to the size where we could do something like that. Great, great. I love that. And for those of you watching who are interested in donating, uh, especially if you're interested in donating a lot, um, we sure would welcome your uh, feedback. And, and by that, I don't mean to be a jerk to those of us that are in my shoes that are going to be donating smaller amounts. But if, if you're listening to us right now and you really like the basic idea of what we're doing, but you do like the idea of maybe 
finding one person and getting them off of the the federal dime and you want to earmark something toward uh, a project like that, we're always open to listening and seeing what is possible within the legal confines of what we do and within our promise to all of our other donors. Is that accurate, Patrick? Oh, definitely. Certainly. Yeah. If we have larger donors that want to earmark things to be used in certain ways, I'm sure that we can find find ways to work together. Yeah. That sounds great. And even if you are not a, what we're calling a, a larger donor, um, you, you know, you, you can't donate a, a $5 one time and then ask us to spend a million on something and, and expect us to follow your instructions. However, we do want to hear, uh, it, it would be really neat if we heard from the 99% of the first hundred donors that they would like a particular direction. That's certainly not something that I think Patrick, uh, the board, I, I don't think any of us would just ignore that. That's something we, we want to make this work for everybody. And if there isn't buy-in, um, it certainly won't. What haven't we chatted about that you would like to uh, put out there? I, I just want to, it's life advice that we're trying to embody here by setting the example. There's a lot of things to complain about right now in the world. There's a lot of things that are going wrong or that are being run into the ground or off a cliff. And it's very easy to just go to work every day, come home, cash the paycheck, and then complain on social media about the world. Um, I would ins- I would hope that we are going to inspire you to, to do more, to actually stop complaining and to create in the world what you want to see. And if an alternative to government so-called charity is something that you'd like to see in the world, we're doing it. Link arms with us. Help us do it. Amen. Well said. And by the way, on the website, voluntaryvirtue.org, uh, you'll see on the contact page, you'll see information for uh, if you would like to uh, interview one of the board members or one of the volunteers, uh, feel free to get in touch with that. We're certainly looking to spread the word and get it rolling. Uh, we're we're definitely launching. However, we want to do this right. And and we would much rather get information out that's solid. We're not going to tell you more than we know right now as time goes on and we have more details and we make a bunch of mistakes and we fix them and learn from them and grow from them. Um, there'll be lots more information coming out. So thank you, Patrick. And uh, onward, upward. Let's, let's go help some folks. Let's do it. Thank you, Shepard. <laughs>